Now then, if you're ready to go on to the next stage of your plan, this is what I suggest we did. Now, earlier, I drew out a basic uh, plan with all of the structures that we've got on that are gonna work around and we're gonna build in. As I said, it's a simple question in maths. You put on your hard landscaping, your hard structures, and from that you can subtract and see what space you've got for your plants. You won't know what will work until you work it against your scale and what you have. So the next thing I suggest we do is that you look up, your, when you start looking for your plants, okay, look at the types of plants that you want to use. For example, I will be using herbs on, on a little herb while I've got there. So I've looked up a number of herbs which I'm going to put on, things like pot marigolds, lavenders, marjorams, thymes, because they would have used those for various things. So rather than get bogged down in the colours as yet, I'm just going to put the types of plants and where I think they're going to be on there. It can be quite daunting to go from a rough sketch through to a, a, a fancy diagram in one hit. So this is kind of like an intermediate step. So, but the beauty of what I'm using is at the moment is because I've run it through a laminator, um, then for example, I can mark stuff on and rub it off. So this pad here becomes like a little scribble pad for you just to experiment where things are going to go. It helps you to imagine where things are going to go. So it can be difficult to see in your head where it's going to go. Now, what also you're going to start to do is where you put things, you're going to put a little number on there as to what it is. Because ultimately, when you do a sheet and a scale, it will have on what plant it is. For example, it will say lupin, and then you'll have the variety of what it is, and colour, book. But right at the very beginning, you're going to have the number. So you could have the number one, and then number two could be delphinium, could be galahad, whatever book you found it in, three, so on and so forth. So you've got, so you know exactly what you've got. It doesn't matter where the numbers are on here. Um, this is my little scribble pad up here I've put. You could do the same with just a sheet of A4. Uh, you can get even if you want. You can do your plant list first and then put this in this way. It doesn't really matter. At the moment, this way you can actually just put your plants in and then worry a little bit about the, the colours. Okay, so for example, there's lupins, there's loads of colours. So you've got to first see they'll fit. So you need to do, so when you do your little research there, you, it's a good idea to get to know what the heights and what the spread's going to be. Um, there are one or two things I've picked which will run slightly taller. For example, the delphiniums will run reasonably tall to about five foot. Um, but everything's fairly short because it's going to be uh, like a little garden. Okay. So with my little marker pen, I can just have a potter about. So we decided to put a strawberry bed on here. Now I can sketch on here where I'm going to have said strawberry bed there. Okay. Now I've got my strawberries up here. So I've got number 11. See, if you put numbers on things, you do not clutter your, your design up. Now I was just about to put a, a, a circle around that, which might make it difficult for you to see there. We'll just put the number 11. It's quite a thick pen, but we'll, we'll work with it. Okay, so that's 11. Now, if you look at my little uh, little sheet, little plant sheet, that's why they're going to have numbers on for. Don't need to write all over this because after a while, it's going to look like uh, it's going to look very cluttered. So you're trying to keep the lines as clean as possible so you can see the design and, the, and you have your information sheet. So you're going to have an information sheet and you're going to have your design. Okay, so for example, this, this, this veg area here, these ones here, they're all going to be veg there. Okay. And I can give that a number because I've given it a number up here. So that's number 10. So when I look at my plant list, I look down, 10, what's that? Oh, yeah, heritage list. And if you want to put a little box, I'll put a little sub box. These could include blah, 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 different varieties there, which I'm currently looking at. For example, um, Spuds, Sharps Express, I think 1938, something like that. Um, so you can work it through that way. Okay. Um, I wanted to be a bit more authentic so the bigger stuff for example i quite like a, a couple of big chunks of rhubarb because you can do loads of that so what you could do is one have a, a rhubarb there and a rhubarb there so now the thing was whatever you use must have a number if it doesn't have a number don't know what it is okay so now we could even go down the side of here this is down the side of the glass eh? 
Now, although we've got Heritage of Edge there, and, and you think, oh, I uh, need another number there. Now, I've already gone up to about number 20 on here. Ah, OK, 21. Runner beans. All of a sudden, that box there becomes 21. People do tend to stress a little bit about how it works, but as long as you can learn to drive it, that's the main thing. Now, I've got a flower border right the way along here, and it's one box wide. Um, so that's indicating to me that it's a metre. Okay. Now, I've got a gravel seated area here, so you have to do a bit of thinking. I quite fancy a bit of scent there. So, more, in fact, all of the, of the perennials are picked, they're going to be in about three foot chunks, you know, one metre apart, roughly. So you can um, draw it like that for now. When you get to your plan, just bear with me a second. If you root around the back, I have got things like that. You can buy them on the internet and uh, they're just stencils. And you'll find that you can get a nice accurate circle if you want to do an accurate circle. Compasses are good if you can get them, but the problem is they skid. See, so I can see if you want it nice and neat, and then people say, Well, how far apart do I put them? Okay, well, bearing in mind this design, you're looking at like a five year length. As long as it, they're kind of touching, that gives you an idea because you know that the plants are going to go X apart. Now, if they're smaller plants, there's nothing stopping you from putting a couple of little X's in the middle of that circle indicating to me that well michael i'm going to have a clump about a meter across but i'm going to bung about three plants in there just to like chunk it up a bit yeah so that works quite well Let's see what i've got else behind here these here a lot of people <laughs> remember these they're called french curves dead handy if you want to do a more free hand if anyone's doing a contemporary design you could design one up with stuff like that again internet they're not expensive um and you get various different sets and they're good for drawing abstract kind of shapes this is a blitz garden 1920s 1930s garden uh, straight lines were king okay but if you would this is very useful if you're not using gridded paper if you want to look a bit more professional if you were just doing a blank sheet i could do a blank sheet and do everything off that because that gives me the centimeters across the top and each one has a particular diameter and that would correspond to your to your plant so if your plant so for example i've got a two centimeters to a meter when you get a two centimeter one that indicates that that's like a meter wide on there okay so there's my i've got so let me little herb wheel here so i might just go on that and just divide it into four and then i could put now the thing was if you know a little bit about your colors your color wheel we are going to go to the color wheel but if you Put say uh, lavender. Obviously, I can't write in there because the box is a bit small, which is why I put numbers on it. Now, there's me number 12 there, there's me lavender there. And across from the lavender, which is a blue, I've got rosemary up here. So, not rosemary, I've got marjoram up here. Get rid of that. Because I'm going to put up there. See, this is a beauty if when you do it, have a bit of a scribble pad, have a play. Golden oregano. Okay, because you've got that lovely gold against the purple. That look brilliant, that. So, and that's number 13. Okay, there. Now, what we can also have behind that one, I fancy the rosemary now, they get, can get quite uh, big-ish. So, what we, what we will do is I'll probably put that at the back edge of the circle. So I'll put my rosemary there, which is 16. And just at the back of here, actually, no, what we'll do is we'll put there on that other quarter there. I've got some pot marigold, which is 19. Now, I've got a range of plants up here. Not everything is going to make the cut. Okay. This is where you, this is where it's just a good thing to sit down with a brunette or a cup of coffee and work out and just see what it's going to look like. Okay. So we've got, I've got my rhubarb there, we're going to have some runner beans and some broad beans and some peas there because they're going to get higher there, all right? It's going to shield it from the house. Now, I know I've got a glass house here, but because of when I was at school, so the sun rises in the east and it's going to go like that across the design. As it comes up, as it gets to about lunchtime, it, the, the glass house gets a full belt, so it gets some shade, which is spot on really. And then the runner beans are, are good there. I've got more veg here. Now, 
I don't know if Kelly likes it or not. However, the, the big thing back in the day would be things like asparagus, because he used to pickle them, all right? Now, asparagus gets kind of big, so you put your asparagus there, and I'm looking up there. Okay, have I got a number for that one? I have. Number four. See, I just randomly numbered them. It doesn't matter what number. As long as the number corresponds to a plant, it doesn't matter. You don't start needing to scribble loads of stuff in here, and you don't need to put the dimensions in because the box shows you how big it is. And if you didn't have the box, then all you do is you just put a ruler next to it and you can go, yeah, that's two centimeters and that's three centimeters. It doesn't matter. So if you do it electronically, if you're doing a CAD design and the CAD design doesn't have the squares on it, it doesn't make a difference. As long as you keep the, the circles and the squares, if you think about it, that's all a design is. It's just a, a jumble of circles and squares and you can pull them about and twist them. So you can do stuff on uh, Word Docs, um, PowerPoint, a few bits and bobs like that, not PowerPoint. Um, I can't think which one it is now. One of them electronic -y things. Um, and you can you can't draw, office draw at it. There's a fair few ones. There are some bespoke design ones which look absolutely brilliant. They do look really good, um, but they can be a bit template-y. Uh, and the other thing that I found with uh, the software stuff was um, I, I bought one and it looked great. I couldn't send it to anybody unless they had the same software, which defeats the object, really. Right, so moving on. Uh, at this back wall here, this is a bit of a boundary wall. Uh, I'm a bit snookered a lot. It does get a fair chunk of sunshine. Now, these have a tin roof, these Anderson shelters. So I don't want them to go like an oven. So what we thought would be a smashing idea would be to plant there. Now, we could have a, a plum tree or a, a damson or anything like that, really. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just looking up here and I've got plum. Okay. Number two. There you go. Uh, Victoria plum, pretty much self fertile, really. That's going to cover that. Now, what also we're going to do is two, four. You've got three squares there. So that's three meters. So there. The pen work. It's going to be number one okay so that's going to be a, an apple tree which is going to be grown as a fan uh, to put at the back and then we're going to put another apple tree in because you need at least two to pollinate each other we have to do a homework on that one okay so we're not going to use the same tree okay so we can still give them the same number even if you wanted to you could even just go one a one b if you like so one and one there. And then when you come to your plant list, 1A, 1B, whatever you want, really. Okay. So I've got rhubarb there. I've got rhubarb there. Okay. The other thing I would probably put here, because it can grow like an absolute hooligan. Yeah. It's going to call it Jerusalem artichoke. Oh, nice pretty flowers. Um, you dig them up and you can eat them. I'm looking around here. And again, ooh, I've got, I haven't got a number for it. Not a problem. I've now got... 22, sending a bit, it's sending a bit like a, like a menu, really. 22, so that's um, uh, Jerusalem. I don't have very good writing. I hate doing this because you get similar writing, but I'll, I'd rather do it this way than people don't mind either. You know, if someone's got bad handwriting, it don't matter. So number, 20, so number 22 there. So again, it doesn't matter. Number three, number three, number 22. All right, I'm just looking up down the list and I can find it. Okay. Now the glass house is there. We could even put 10 there because that's going to have tomatoes, maybe some cucumbers in there as well. Okay. Well, I can jump about, don't matter. Uh, as long as you, you, you get around pretty much everything. So looking at these other flowers at the bottom here. Okay. We could put in here. So I've got Put some circles in, but I need to put some numbers in, don't I? So that corner there, I'm going to have a stocks, which is 20, because they do smell quite nice. Because if I put a, we're putting a bench there, right? Next to the gate. You can go in there, cup of tea, plonk yourself down there, and enjoy the ride. And you're looking across at the lavenders and the herbs, and you think, oh, no, I'll go in there, put some music on. Um, so also behind here, I think it would be quite nice to put some. This is a slightly early flowering one, Aqualegia, known as Granny's Bonnet. 
and again we'll put them in if you're doing a meter you probably put three or four different plants in there we can do different colors particular ones there's one called McKenna hybrids and they are lush I will be using them because they're quite nice they're very reminiscent of 20s and 30s I think um next one here and I'll playing about there so we're probably going to put one there because that's going to be my delphinium there what have I got for me delphinium I've got number six check out number six please yeah there so next to the delphinium you see I'm going you see what I mean I'm just going for groups of plants I'm not necessarily going to get bogged down in the colors all right because if you look up a list of delphiniums there's, there's loads and there's different heights you can get dwarf ones you can get fat mixed you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes but the real thing is if you're not confident or don't know your plants very well put your plants in groups get them where you think you want them and the effect <clears throat> and then you can do it and as you get more confident with your plant names you can you can then put them straight in and put the plant names with all in one hit this is just a nice little way just to have a bit of a potter about with them really you know okay so this one here so I might use this more than once so we've got so that's number eight there number eight is dahlias and dahlias you can use cut flowers as well so I'm going to make the most of that one mainly because it's my design and I like dahlias so I'll probably put some there and I'll probably put some up here as well there's a flower or summer you see number eight there now what we could also put on here all right is some hardy geraniums we can put again we may decide to put them in a group of three but four or five it doesn't matter um but of course you can't see what they are until i put the number in and that's number seven because it corresponds to a seven up here so you're working your way through and we'll just see what other different bits and bobs i've got so i've used lupins have you used my lupins up no i haven't oh i've lost some lupins in gosh lupins there now the, the posh designers like to use things twice they call it repetition I'm not, I'm not sure whether they're just saving a couple of quid but we don't mind a bit of repetition either so i'm going to put some more stocks in there which is 20. so then again i think i said you before you want to pull people into a design okay you're going to be legging it down there if there's a bomb raid but by and large it might not be so you never wander down and you'll spot this and if you're coming out of an evening these stocks do bring a lot of perfume up so you'll they'll hopefully waft into what sort of drag you down here and that's the idea okay so um let's see i'm going to move some more of that asparagus up there because it's a big old bed and it does get quite thick so what have i got left i might put some more aquilegias in next to my dahlias because as the aquilegias pack up then the dahlias will kick in so we'll go like that you see how we get you see how we get to work it now i'm looking up here so always have your plant list handy if you're not sure have your sketch handy as well i just like to have everything together here um have everything at hand if you need to again this is great because i just got this laminated but you could use one of them you know the poly pockets you put your documents in could use that and put your, your design underneath because what i've done is i've i've been a bit cheeky i've scanned this this is actually not the original the originals tucked away and then when i'm happy with where everything is i can add these plants whoop, onto the original the jobs are good okay i've not having to re redraw the whole thing from scratch okay that that's the the real heartache if you have to if you get a design going and it's nearly there and unfortunately you absolutely kill it because you've done a, a mistake on it so by the way this is a path so we could even put some pots on as a rule i do not put anything on there unless it's reasonably permanent okay we in your little footnote you could put pops out it if you wish i've got a couple of gaps here one there i've got one there now i think what we'll do on that one i'm looking up to see what i've what i've, have I got any things that i've kind of missed let's see da, da, da. i think i'd probably put on a few more so geraniums here and what the geraniums here i might put a fair a fair few on there and uh, let's see these are hardy ones there's a lovely little blue one called johnson's blue and there's different pink ones 
So if I put, I want to put a, a, a group on there. Now they're low, so what will happen is, as you say, we'll show me, see, I, I can show you. So the idea is you're going to have a little bit of rise and fall, a little bit of difference across here. Okay. That one doesn't appear to have a number. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll put something else on the back of it. I'm going to put on there some delphiniums, which is number six, which is a bit crackers, but because they've got the height and the bench is there, they will give you a little bit of um, seclusion. They'll give you, you no, know, just a little bit of privacy is the word I'm looking for. Because I'm trying to create this as a little area here. So, just to sum up, if you start with it, your basic features, bosh them on, and then you can potter about with what things look like on the top. Okay. I will then, when I'm happy with what I've got, I will look them up. I will look them up. Uh, and then I'll put the uh, variety names in and look at the colours and, and just match them up and make sure I'll snag them up. Snagging is a, is a, is a contractor's comment. I do apologise. If you ever ask me to, if I've asked you to snag it, go through it, check it. All right? If there's any faults in it, put them right. So what I'll do is I'll go through my plant list, okay, that I've picked. I'll snag it through, make sure it's accurate. Uh, and then I'll put the heights and spreads and stuff in. And then I will finally transpose the whole thing together and make the final uh, drawing okay so that's bit that's it really and of course the beauty then if it's all wrong i can just rub the whole thing out and then start again if it's not right so that and that's why i do it the way i do okay